All right. Uh, hey, um, I want to say welcome to everybody for today's 1.86 release webinar. Um, I'm Keith. I'm the owner of Smart Build. Sean McFeely will be walking us through the software changes today. And our format is that we're going to keep everybody uh, muted. There's a chat button in the upper, you can see the cloud in the upper right hand corner of your screen. As Sean is walking through the program, if you have questions, go ahead and just type them in in the chat box, okay? And uh, we'll have somebody who fields it and we'll um, relay those messages by, via text to Sean, okay? So we generally take about 40 minutes to show you the features and then we open it up to Q&A and uh, sometimes it'll go longer than an hour. So that's the format. Just to kind of put in context this release today, we're really tickled to show off the, uh, and we're getting great response already. This is our first release of the uh, uh, floor plan designer capability in Smart Build that'll let you input a floor plan. And uh, and that will come out with this release, which we don't know if it's gonna go live, it may go live anywhere from tonight through next Tuesday evening. We'll, you'll know when we post because we'll announce it to the world. And just so everybody knows, in quick succession, we're gonna be addressing other features that we know are needed for interior barn design, including putting a ceiling on this first floor of, of construction, which will serve as the floor to the second story construction. Then we'll let you add that second story of construction um, and then lofts and mezzanine. So anyway, th th they are very much in our site and we're gonna be moving forward very aggressively on adding those capabilities. So I'll tell you what, everybody's really excited to see this stuff. So I just, uh, I will mute myself, uh, give the mic over to, to Sean and let him walk you through the software. So thanks again for attending. All yours, Sean. Okay, thanks, Keith. Okay, so I'm showing my screen here. Okay, so couple things first as Keith mentioned I'm using the beta site so this is not going to be live it's not going to be on your system until we release like he said here sometime between now and Tuesday evening uh, you can go to this beta site and you can play around with this new stuff before we release it the beta site is a completely separate site um, it'll have your data and your jobs it's not completely up to date but it's pretty close so you can mess around and play with stuff um, and it has no effect on your your everyday system it's really just for testing this helps us out because there's no way that we can test everything and all the different ways that uh, you guys use this so to get here you just put beta in front of your website name and then you sign in like usual and Paul who's on the line here he is the head of our testing department and he can help you out with anything if you if you are interested in doing some beta testing um, you can just let us know and we can get you in touch with Paul so this is on the beta site right now you have a few days to go and mess with this if you want to before it becomes live and Today, we're going to go through all the new stuff, including um, inputting the interior walls. I'm going to do that towards the end. So there's several other things that we want to go through. Just to give you an idea of what's new, um, I'm not going to go super in-depth or detail with this, but we will record this. So we will make that available in the next few days. If you want to come back and review this, you can. And then we also have our help and support team uh, that can help you with any of these new items. So I'm going to give you a pretty quick overview. Then we'll get into the interior walls. And then, like he said, we'll open it up for questions on new stuff or anything you guys want to talk about, really. OK, so the first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to go into the settings. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the e-modeler which if you are not aware, eModeler, you can have a separate site um, for your company that can kind of be dumbed down and you can make it available on like your website and anybody who goes to your website, um, your company website can click on this. They can get access to a smart build that's kind of dumbed down. They can do some design. <clears throat> 
and they can submit that for a quote. And then you can respond to that. It'll go into your system and you can give them a final quote or however your process works. Um, and you can use all your materials and get your pricing and all that kind of stuff. It can easily be integrated into your full system. So it's like a separate website that they can use. And we added uh, this e-modeler as a separate item underneath the settings. It was in the customize. So with this particular release, it's now got its own section here underneath the settings for e-modeler. So this is where you can do some uh, customization of your e-modeler program if you do have that set up. And the one thing that we did here that I'll point out first of all is you can upload a custom document file so that when this um, person, potential customer off the internet does a design and submits that quote, you can automatically present them um, and actually gonna send this in, via email a customized document where you can have your logo, you can do any sort of formatting you want, for those of you who are familiar, this is the same as the document templates that you can set up and print out. So these can be customized. You can put your logo, you can put any information you want on there. You can also have job specific information that populates. So like contact information, like the customer's name, um, the total price of the job, all kinds of stuff that you want. So you can set up this document that's customized for your company and it will be customized for this individual customer who submits this quote. It'll populate uh, the template with their job specific information, you know, like their name and the size of the building and total price and that kind of thing. So the new thing here is that you can set this up specifically for e-model or response. And in order to do this, there's a little bit of setup. So you do, I'm getting this message here because you have to have an email field um, in your job questions and it has to be a required field. And that is just so it knows where to send this document. When the customer submits that quote, they're gonna have to put in their email. And assuming they put in the correct email, it's going to send them this document to that email. Um, so in order to do that, I'll just show you that real quick since um, I need to do that. You go into the framing rules, and then you I would do under anonymous. Yeah, you'd want to do it under the anonymous. Um, I'm not logged into the anonymous, so I'm just going to do it here. But you would want to do this uh, for your anonymous. So we'll, yeah, I can go back here real quick, um, just so we can see that that message is going to go away, and we'll see some of the uh, how you actually upload this. But you put you'd want to do this on your anonymous site. I'm going to do it here just for demonstration. But you go into the job questions here that you can customize and set up. And in this case, I already have an email address, part of my job questions. And we'll see these. We'll go and design a job here coming up. And you'll see these in a job. And in order for this to work, I do need to make this just required in this case. So if you don't have an email, it does have to be exactly like this, but you can hit add and you can uh, put in email and save this. So you can customize these and add these in. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you while we're here is we have something new that you can add to these job questions. And when I go into add, there's a new item here called separator. And if you select this and Let's see, I'd, I'll just call this contact info, and I, I won't do a tooltip or anything at this point. And I'm gonna save that, and so now we have this separator down here, and you can move this up, maybe uh, we, we could just put it here, and then you know, we could add another one of these. Maybe I'll call this one just loading. Well, so whatever you want to do with these, um, just a way to help you organize these and make them a little bit more clear to group these. And 
you'll see once we get into a job, these will be part of the job questions. So just a way to organize these more. Um, I'm going to leave that at this. So I came in here. I have email, but I made it required. I put in a couple of these separators. I'm just going to hit save. And I'm going to go back to the email or settings here. And I'm expecting to see the ability to input that. You have to add it to your e-modeler questions. Okay, yeah. It has to be there. Let's go and do that real quick. Okay, so this is, I went into the anonymous. That's what you were trying to tell me before. Okay, so now we'll go back. So I did that for the anonymous system. And now we have the ability here to upload a file. So if you go into Word, you can design this customized template. And we do have some separate videos and support can help you with that as well. Um, same concept as the document templates, but if you design that document, that template, you can save it on your computer and then you can come in here and just upload that and you can go search for it, upload it, and then it's going to send that document to that customer who submitted that quote. So you can get really customized with that, give them a really nice uh, looking quote or anything really that you, you want to submit to them. Uh, okay, one other thing that I wanted to show here in the framing rules, just so people are aware of this, who, if you're someone who comes in here and has to maintain these framing rules or set these up, not everybody has to do this, but just so people are aware, we did create the ability for both the hidden advanced and the hidden if you click on this text, then you'll get a little pop-up here where you can unhide all of these. And this is per tab. So if you want to come in and unhide all of these, then it's just a single button click, or you can hide them all. And you can also share these with your builders. Um, so this little button here will apply to all the builders, any other systems that you have underneath you. Um, so if you're setting people up, you can go in and, you know, if you only have a few things you turn off, or maybe there's only a few things you turn on, you just have the ability here to easily turn these on and off for uh, the hidden fields. And these are what's going to be visible when you go into a job. So different users can have different levels. Um, the hidden advanced, if you have advanced settings, I should probably, yeah, no, these are all unhidden. So anyone who has hidden advanced is going to see everything here in this particular case. And then anyone who does not have those permissions really is not going to see anything, but maybe we just have a couple things that they can see. Um, so this is how you can control visibility, um, between like administrators and people who you don't want changing all these different things. You just give them the things that they can change and the anonymous e-modeler is a good example of that where you don't want them to be able to change everything, but you want to be able to get in there and change things if you need to. Okay. So I think that's everything really just for the settings that I wanted to show at this point in time. So I'm going to go back to my homepage, I'm not gonna save any of that, so I'm just gonna leave. And I'm gonna go to the job page. So this is a list of all the jobs, and the one thing I wanted to point out here that's new is when you click on this name, you'll go into the details of all these jobs. Before, what we used to do is completely process the job, and that, that would mean we could get the total price and the updated pricing, but it also meant that it took some time to open these up because it was going through and just completely processing the job. We've made a change here in this release where if you click on this, it is going to pop up the details, not including the total price, which is one thing we kind of lost here. So feel free to give us feedback on this, but basically um, you can get in to edit the job as well from here. So this is 
if you want to click uh, quickly be able to go through these and just click on this and like oh which job was this is this the one that had this uh, one type of structure then you can come through here and kind of quickly run through these jobs now as opposed to it taking a little bit more time just to run through the job and get all the information but if you need to actually get into the job you can just click on this edit job button and I I'll actually do that right now and you can also filter and search this list and break things down so this is just a, a nice way to quickly be able to access and uh, review all the jobs on your job list. So this is the one that I wanted to get into today. We'll go over a few things once we get into here. So I'm gonna actually just click on edit job and it's gonna take me into this job. Could have also gone to the home page and access this job that way, or you can open it straight from the job list as well. So this is one that I set up, did a little bit of work on just uh, to do some demonstration here. Um, and so this will be pretty simple, pretty simple building. As you can see, a mono slope roof. And I'm going to turn off the shell. One thing that is new that we did in this release is now we do have the girts running all the way up the high side of this mono. If you do have mono trusses like this on the high side, we were not putting girts, but now we do have the girts up there. So that's just something new that I wanted to point out. Um, so we're going to do a couple things here, and then we're going to go in and do some interior rooms. And just a couple things just to point out here. I'm going to go into a porch. Um, I'm going to try to put a porch here on this front left. We'll see how this looks. Uh, so I'm going to click on this. It's going to be an open porch. Now, one thing that I guess doesn't totally apply to this building, but just to point out, we did create a default here. If you're going to do an open wall or an open porch, if you have a stud frame building, if the, uh, the main framing for this building is stud frame, if you put on an open porch, it's going to default to using post frame at this point before we if you're using a stud frame main building we would just default these uh, open porches to stud frame as well and we had a lot of requests for people just you know if I'm doing this open porch I want this to be a stud frame so it's going to default to post frame at this point even if you have a stud frame building if you're doing an open porch or open wall it's going to be post frame just something to keep in mind um, so I'm just going to put in a porch here. This is I clicked on the wraparound porch, so this is going to give me a full-length wraparound porch at this point. It's going to be eight foot width. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out here is just a little change, but we had a lot of requests for this. You can do a ceiling height for this porch. We can just define the height of the porch, or you can set this offset down, which is going to base the height of the porch on the main building. And if you say zero, it's going to match the eave of this porch, basically. Um, and the thing that we did that you'll notice is before when we did offset down zero, we just defaulted this to eight foot. More often than not, when people are using offset down, they really do want to just match the eave line. But you could say one foot, and we could go down one foot from the eave. But now, just something to keep in mind, or just in response to your feedback. This is going to offset, or this is going to default to zero when you use this offset down at this point. Um, I think I have some overhangs on here. Maybe we'll use rafters for this. And I, we'll leave, I guess, the roof pitch there. So couple things in there for those attached buildings that I just wanted to point out. Um, those open wall posts, even when you have a stub frame, and then that offset down zero is just going to default to zero. So a little bit of weirdness going on there. I'd have to maybe look at why that's doing that, but we'll just kind of go with that for now. So we have this uh, open wraparound porch now. Um, 
and really did that just to point out a couple things with those um, with those porches. So now, yeah, I think at this point, I think we'll go in and do some interior walls. So I have kind of a garage maybe over here, and then I have this main building. I have a little bump-in porch, and I'm not going to do any of the openings here. I'm going to go into this 2D view, and this is where we do the interior walls. You can still do the divider walls, which we've had for quite a while now. Those are still available, but it's gonna be quicker and easier if you have multiple walls to do to come in here to this 2D mode. And you have to watch a little bit because it did kind of rotate my building, depending on how you have that rotated, but we do have the labels here so you can get uh, perspective on this. Very likely, we're going to put in a, something that you can rotate this here, so you can kind of flip it around. So as you get plans, you can orient this according to the plans. Um, so we'll jump right into the interior walls here. So there's doors and windows and interior walls. And to activate these, you just click on this, this drop down here, either doors and windows or interior walls. So I clicked on this interior wall. And now you can either add a single wall. This is gonna be similar to the divider walls where we can just input a single wall. If you do full length, you'll see if I hover over here, it's gonna give me, it's gonna just give me the longest wall until it runs into another wall here. And you do get these dimensions here. You can change up the length though if you wanted to. This is now gonna be a 10 foot wall. Um, and you can change the height. This is going to be full height. It's going to match the height of the building that we have input. We do know that we need to have some other options here. You can also put in a height of a wall, whatever you may want it to be. Um, and we do know, especially with this mono building, we know we need to just have a, a setting that's basically just go to the ceiling or the bottom of the truss or rafter just uh, to kind of get some rake walls. But right now, we you have this full height or you can input a height of the wall. The side A and side B, you can have different finishes on this wall where you can either match your liner settings or the exterior finish. Um, and we'll, we, we'll look at that a little bit. We'll go back into the 3D model and you can see uh, the different types of finishes you can have. You can really have all kinds of different finishes. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to match the liner settings here. So this is an individual wall that you can put in. Um, I'm going to jump into the rooms or add a room and really start inputting using this feature. So if I click on the add room, we have some defaults here. As you can see, you can kind of just hover and it's gonna build a room based on these, the length and the width that you put in. So maybe if we do something, maybe we'll do like a master bedroom back here. Um, and that I think that's probably the orientation I want, but you can click this button. This is a good time just to demonstrate that it'll flip these two inputs. If you put something in here and you actually want it to run the other way, uh, then you can click this and it just it'll flip these for you. So But I'm gonna just get into this corner here It kind of snaps you in and I'm gonna just place these walls and so now It didn't put a wall here. It recognizes that we have a wall on this exterior um, And it did put in these two interior walls and we can keep going with this um, You know, maybe in this case we want to do something a little bit different here. Maybe there's more like a closet or something. And you'll notice that even though I have the six by 16, it, uh, the 16 foot length, it doesn't, it's not gonna let you run through this wall. So it just kind of took it as far as it could. And you can see it's 12, seven and a half there. Um, and maybe if we flip this, 
you know, we could put it here if we want it, or maybe we want something more down here. So this one, we get the full length here. So maybe I'll put it down here. And then you can see here again, even though I have um, these length and width, it just basically is going to let me fit this right in here. So if we are gonna finish this off, or we could just put the same size of a room somewhere over here if we really wanted to, but maybe I'll just put it here. Um, and so we could keep going with these. You know, you can you can put in as many of these walls as you want. I could come over here into this garage area and put in walls. Um, probably just leave that be as it is a garage. We'll just leave that open. And so that's how you do that. Same same inputs as with those individual walls. We couldn't come in here and do some individual walls as well. Once you have these in here you can click on individual walls and you can adjust and change these. We have a couple help text up here. So you can click on a dimension to change where this is at. Um, so I clicked on that 12, seven and a half, we could say something like 14 and it's just gonna change that dimension to 14. So I just move that there. Um, you can also change the length of these walls. And if you double click on a wall, you're going to get into the edit mode. You can also click on this edit button and it'll take you in here. So right now the length of this 16, five and a half. Um, and yeah, I don't remember exactly what distance I had moved this if we wanted to try to kind of get this back. We are going to be adding a lot more tools in here to edit these once you get them in. Things like, you know, cutting this to this particular wall and being able to offset these and some snap points that you can drag and do some different things. So over time, we're going to make this a lot easier. But you can come in here and adjust this length. Maybe um, we'll just call this 16 at this point. And so you can see there's a, some additional text here. Whatever side of the wall you click on, that's the length that's going to adjust. So in this case, I clicked up here and you can see these dimensions. Where you click, it's where it's going to place these dimensions. And so that's going to give you a hint about which side of the wall you're going to be changing. So I clicked up here on this half of the wall. So when I change this length, it's going to adjust this side of the wall. So when I say update, you know, we just had a little bit of a change there. If you click down here and you double click or if you hit that edit button, then we're going to be changing this length if that's what you want to do. Um, that also means if you click near the center of the wall. Yeah, you may not. If the program doesn't know what you're doing, it's going to give you a blank, but it, it is going to give you some text to let you know that didn't really know which side of the wall you were trying to change the length of. So in this case, if you did want to change a different side, you have to do something a little bit closer to one of the ends. And now we can come in here and change this to something else. Uh, one thing to point out here, nice little feature is you can do things like plus three and it'll just add three to the existing length of that. You can do plus or minus there, obviously. And then once we change that, it'll add three feet to that wall. And of course you can delete these walls. You can kind of click on these to scroll through these. Um, and if you do double click on that list, it'll pull you into the edit as well. One thing that we want to do for the future, there's a lot of things that we want to do that we'll keep building and working on this. Uh, but one of the things that we want to do pretty quickly here is to give you some more properties of these walls where you could do things like, you know, change it from a two by four wall to a two by six wall, just right here. Um, or things like potentially your top plates and bottom plates to be able to change those. Also the foundation settings for these walls. So, we want to bring in some of those properties of these walls directly into this uh, input. 
Right now, we just have this, but we will have more coming. You can, once we go back, you'll see here, you can go in and you can change individual walls and change their properties of these walls the same way that you can now. But in the future, we want to add more ability so you can just do it right here. Okay. Um, so I think at this point, the other thing that you can do here in the 2D view is input doors and windows quickly as well. So, you know, I'll just do a couple things here. Um, I'm not going to get too fancy. I'm just going to kind of stick with whatever I have here. And maybe we have an entry coming in here. So when I click here, you can do the same thing where you can click on these dimensions. Um, if you want to change a dimension, there is sometimes it's hard to see, but there's something you can click here to center it. So I clicked on that and it just will center that particular wall. Um, and so we can just keep adding. You zoom in, Sean. Yeah, if you zoom in on, on the spot. Okay, thanks. Um, so we could select some different types of openings here if we wanted to, but you know, maybe I'm just gonna throw in a few things here. Maybe we wanna get in here this way and get in here and we can come over, maybe I'll do, some type of opening here. I wonder if I have, do I have anything specific for garage? No, I guess not. I guess I do, maybe. Um, I'll just grab one of these and maybe we'll put this over here on the front. Maybe we'll do a couple of these and, you know, whatever kind of openings that you want to input, we could put in some windows as well. I'll just kind of pick whatever and maybe we'll just throw in a few windows here just for fun. Okay, so one other thing here, there is an undo and a redo in this particular mode. So, you know, I just put in that last window. If I hit that, it's gonna get rid of that, but you can also redo and put that back in. So it's a nice feature. Uh, you can print this particular view as well. Um, and, so whatever you have shown there is, is what it's going to print, whatever zoom level. And it's another thing to bring up is that we are going to work on these outputs as well. That's one of the things that it's gonna take us time to work on you know, getting outputs for these interiors with all the dimensions and things. And we'll get it, uh, we can look at some of the outputs, but we will be working on this. Um, you can also, output this and bring it into any sort of a CAD program. And then you can do some manipulation of uh, the layouts that we give you. It's a, it's a big challenge for us, frankly. Um, you know, so it takes a lot of work for us to get the, the outputs. Uh, you know, we have the, the programs like CAD that have just spent a lot of time and uh, working on those. And so, We'll work on these outputs, but you can output these to CAD and you can do some of your own work on them. Uh, I think that, I think, you know, it's a pretty good overview that we do have a separate video that gets into um, inputting these walls as well. And, and we'll continue to work on this. And you guys do have a few days if you wanna go into beta and you can kind of play around with this. And of course, give us feedback on this um you know we're going to just be continuing to work on this and making it better and better i'm going to hit return here it's going to take us back to our 3d you can cancel this if you're like oh i wanted to do that one thing forgot to do that you can just hit cancel and you're right back here i think we did that the previous release but you can also just drop everything if you say no it's just going to get rid of all these changes but if you do want to save these changes which i do then we want to hit yes and that is going to take us back into the program. Did I just find a little bug there? Looks like it, yeah. I wonder if that was from the cancel. So this is why we don't beta. This is, <laughs> this is why it's still in beta. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I'm gonna have to say no there, which is kind of a bummer, but I'll go back in here. Um, let's just kind of quickly, 
I'll throw in a couple rooms over here. Maybe we'll flip this and, you know, I don't, I don't know. We're kind of just making this stuff up at this point. So we'll put in another here and did keep a couple of my doors here. Wow, I might have found a serious bug here, guys. Looks like it, yeah. <clears throat> Those doors wound up in that other wall. Yeah. Huh. That's a bummer. Uh, so if we go into doors, I don't know if we want to be able to clean this up. Yeah, put in a couple extra doors there. So I think those are good. It did keep those. Um, Got some extra windows down there. Yeah, kind of messed with the other thing you can do here, you can you can actually sweep select those windows. You can mm -hmm. sweep select them and then just hit delete the delete key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's probably a good idea, huh? Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely confused mm -hmm. program here. We'll have to figure out exactly how that happened. Well, let's see what happens here if we do return. It looks like we got some doors here. Go ahead and select them there and delete. Uh, oh, there you go. Hmm. Well, I wonder <laughs> what we can do here. Maybe if I s save this job. So I'll save this and so it did keep those doors and it did keep uh, my interior walls. So some of that got confused. Um, okay, so a couple other things to point out here. We did add this roof toggle and this is really to be able to view these interior walls. And one thing that I didn't do here, a couple things that I did want to point out, I have um, my exterior wall framing is post frame, as you can see. I have my interior wall framing to match the exterior, which is going to be post frame in this case. You can set this interior wall framing to stud frame. And then when you go into that 2D view and input those into your walls, it's going to put them in a stud frame. I can also just change that to stud frame right here. And if you do this before you go into the input, then it'll make them stud frame right away. You can still go into the advanced edit here and you can go into any sort of individual wall and you can make individual changes to the properties as well. So we could come in here and do something different with this particular wall. I'll just kind of leave it. Um, the other thing that I didn't do is, you know, I had these matching my liner panels, which we can just turn on liner here. There are detailed settings for the liners and the liners could be any sort of material that you want to put on there. I didn't have those turned on, but if I do turn those on, then we will end up uh, getting liner. You can go into individual walls and you can change up the liner panels. You could have different liner on different walls, but we'll just turn this particular liner that I have on for all the walls. So we have this new roof toggle. This is really to help see these interior walls. A uh, couple things that we know we need to do. We have some issues with the liner not recognizing exactly where the end of this is. This is actually gonna come a bit later, next release. The other thing, the top plates have a similar issue. So these are things that are on our radar. We are gonna fix these as soon as we can, but we, we thought it'd be worthwhile to release this and give the inputs. And this is really the way it works right now. Um, and we do have this corner trim that likes to go up here that we are gonna clean up as well. And then we will have an option to take these walls in this case to where you can rake these to where they can match the bottom of the truss in this case. Okay. So 
So still have the shell toggle. We did remove, we changed up the text here a little bit. And then we do have the landscape that you can turn off and on. And then we still have these settings here where you can kind of change up some of the looks here. So that I think is everything that I wanted to get into. Um, our next release, which we'll do, you know, in uh, three or four weeks here, we're going to have some updates and cleanup for these interior walls. Um, you know, there's one other thing that I wanted to show real quick here that some people uh, have wanted to see, and that is if we go into the drawings and if we look at these kind of gable walls here and look at the sheathing, in this particular configuration that I have, we have this panel here at the end, and I don't really need this panel. I can cover this up with the trim, let's say. So for this particular layout, and I do, I'm using this outside of post. You can measure your building from the outside of the post or the outside of the girt. And so I know there's been quite a few of you who've run into this who use outside of post where you have this extra panel that you really don't need. You can cover that up and it's just extra. We have a new setting that is going to be underneath the wall sheathing. Um, and it's called corner sheathing margin. And basically this is just saying at the corners here, if you have less than whatever you input here, I'm gonna put in two inches. Um, it kind of just allows this to be covered. You can think about it like it's going to cover this two inches that's going to be um, not quite covered in this particular layout. So the program really gets very specific and exact with it, and it sees that there's some little bit of room here, and so it needs an entire new panel. But this can be covered with trim, let's say if it's under two inches. So if I put in two inches there, and this is a full job setting, so anytime that this comes up, it, you can set this in your framing rules and save it as a default. And then anytime you have any space in these kind of conditions that's less than two inches, then it's just going to get rid of those. Uh, did I end up getting another panel over there? And then we have the same kind of thing is going to happen over here, actually, but that already got rid of that. Um, did we? Yeah, so this is beta. We have a few days here. These are the kind of things that we clean up here in beta. So we'll clean up that issue. We'll figure out what happened there. It was probably something with the interior walls when I either maybe did the undo and redo. But this looks like a little bit of an issue too, I think, here. I don't know why it's adding an additional panel on this other end. So I don't, I don't know. Probably don't want to dig in this too much at this point, but we'll clean this up as well, I'll try to figure out what's going on might be the mono situation might confuse a little bit. Anyway, that's something we'll clean up. That should work. Um, I think especially with your typical gable wall, it's going to work better, but we'll figure that out and clean that up. But So just so you know, you can get rid of that extra panel in some cases. You can go to individual walls too and set this if you end up with a situation where you have an extra panel, you should be able to come in and use this. Uh, yeah, so next time we'll do some more work on interior walls. Um, we'll clean up some of those corners and those top plates in the liner. And we'll have several other things that we'll, that we'll get into. So that, that took quite a bit of time. But at this point, unless anybody on the Smart Belt team has anything else you think we should share, We'll just uh, open it up now to in discussions, questions, anything anybody wants to get into. Um, Smart Bell team, any questions come in or anything else you want to point out? Yeah, a couple did. Um, Timothy at Liberty Building Supply asked um, why that garage, the wall between the garage and the building is post frame. Uh -huh. The reason is it's an exterior wall. Um, it was. It was the exterior wall for the building, and then this, the garage was added as a as a uh, attached building. 
Um, yeah. You can go into advanced edit and change that wall to be a stud frame wall. So you can mm -hmm. go in and make ext6 a stud frame wall. Yeah, so it consider, yeah, considers yeah, ext6 is not a stud frame. If it was me putting this in, I probably would have put in the whole building as one and then put in the divider wall between the garage and the main building as a stud frame wall, mm -hmm. as an interior wall. But if the, if the garage just kind of offset a little bit from the house, his question is a valid one. Are there scenarios where you have an attached building and you want that common wall to be considered an interior wall. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's see. Duncan asked about lofts or mezzanines. And as Keith mentioned at the start, yes, they are on our roadmap. Um, as our second. So, along with second, second, along with second yes. floors, yes. Right, yep. right. Yeah, so that's yep. very much on our radar screen, just so everybody knows. And that in the very, I mean, that's our top priority. So we'll be adding those capabilities pretty quickly. Mark has yep. assured me that we already have most of the infrastructure in place for these things. So they won't, they will not take long at all. By the way, I noticed yep. there was a couple, of, there were a couple of questions here about measurements. And that, that'd be an interesting question for the, the whole group gathered here. Right now, we input the room size. Um, to the face of the of the wall. I think there was a request or, and this is a question for everybody here, do, would you measure walls to the center of the framed wall as opposed to the inside dimension? So yeah. if, if, so if you go to 2D of, view, yeah. if you go to 2D view, Sean, <clears throat> just click, click on add a room. Um, when you do that, it asks for the length and the width. And you'll notice that length and width is to the inside of those walls. The theory being when somebody says, I want an eight by 10 room, they want a room that's eight foot by 10 foot. They don't want it eight foot, 10, 10 feet from center of wall to center of wall because nobody ever sees the center of the wall. So what do you guys think we should be doing in that particular scenario? We could make it an option, but- Moreover, more, more Mark, I want to point out too that you know, there's going to be a drywall finish, so we're we're doing it to the frame, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the inside clear dimension to the frame, not the finish wall. But that's a question, yeah. Do, would do people want to do it to the center of wall? Um, we're seeing a couple people came back and said no, it's inside, which is the way we're doing it right now. So everybody yeah. who wants to, you can. By the way, can everybody unmute themselves right now, Sean? Uh, yeah, I think. So Anybody who wants to, you can either type in, you can either type in the chat or unmute yourself and just type in. So please, please do so. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of votes for inside of room. So yeah, like, like Keith mentioned, yeah. inside a room is that inside of drywall finish or is that inside of frame? Yeah, I mean you, you can see variation on plans. Yeah, we're, we're get the, for the people who are responding are all basically saying inside a frame, which is what we're doing now, which is good, which is encouraging. We guessed right. But then, but that means too. So consider everybody. So if we go from a two by four to a two by six wall, you know, think about that. So we're what we're what we're what we're the way we've designed this input right now is that people are desiring that that room dimensions on to the inside of frame, basically. So if you got it, so if you had a two by six wall, and you're switching that from two by four to two by six, you would not have as much room remaining. So you'd have to indicate a smaller wall, or sm I'm sorry, smaller room size. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. So these these are the kinds of things that. As, as we use it, as we as you guys start to use it, you're going to come up with really cool ideas for what we should do. Um, uh, 
And then uh, Duncan just asked again, because he asked before and he thinks we skipped him. Uh, we just hadn't gotten to it yet. Uh, we build on a lot of sloped stikes. Back of the building would have an eight foot retaining wall and the front would be a usual height. Is there a way to change the foundation heights like that? So it calls for shorter posts and metal, et cetera. Uh, there is not right now. Um, it is something that we have thought about, but it's not very high on our roadmap. But Duncan, you have brought it up again, so it moved up a little bit. Thank you very much. Um, Jalen asked, is it possible to get metal lengths for above and below a lean-to porch? So I think what you're talking about there, Jalen, is when you have a porch that hits like halfway up the wall, you want to have the metal go from the ground up to the ceiling of the porch and then stop and then go on up above. Uh, and, and I believe, and I believe, Mark, we've, it's also been requested that we just cut the metal if there's only a nailer for a rafter, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be a truss system or a rafter system. And I don't yeah, think so we, we do have some. Yeah, we do have some enhancements on the list for for better treatment of porches, um, better handling all of the nitty gritty details of of what happens when that porch hits the main building. So we do have some items on the roadmap. Um, they're coming at some time in the future. It all depends on, on what you guys need most. Um, Someone asked, are gutters and downspouts on the roadmap? They are, but they're way down there. Um, attached uncovered decks as well. Um, you could probably do something like that once we get into mezzanines and lofts. You might be able to do something like that. The problem is the framing for a deck is very specific to decks. Um, there are entire programs that do nothing but decks, and they're pretty complicated. So we have, we have shied away from those. Yeah, and another note, uh, by the way, on gutters and downspouts, one of the reasons it's low on our list, really what's low on our list is treating them as first class citizens like cupolas where you'll get a really precise um, uh, graphic depiction. And the reason that is so is because people can use our package equations to do takeoff. So they get the materials for the gutters and downspouts. And if you're not doing that, our support team can show you how to do that. But um, but uh, I do want to say that yeah, we, it's it's on our list. We know that that's something that we need to address. All right. Um. Timothy says, can we have a roof over a roof? No, that would be silly. Why would you have a roof over a roof? Um, so um, I guess not really sure what you're talking about there, Tim. Um, it might help if you just unmute. Oh, okay, so you had you had a little eyebrow above. Yeah, we can hear you, Tim. So you had an eyebrow above a window, and then you had a window above it with an eyebrow above that. Yeah. So what was ending up was is he was kind of just having this like um, it's ended. I essentially did it like it was a like a small cant that would go out and over, and it was literally just to cover over top of the window so that the water would shed away, and it came out about two feet. I mean, this was a pretty eclectic. Uh, house or building that we were making, um, but it was something that he really wanted, and he wanted to have it to happen on the bottom floor and on the top floor. So I had windows over top of each other. But Smart Build doesn't allow you to set a roof in the same location horizontally. Right. 
Right. So if you went in, if you tried to go in, Sean, and just put an awning on this wall, custom. Uh, no, no, cancel that. Do a custom one. Awning custom start. Uh, yeah, right about there. Go ahead and put one there. Uh, I don't think we want eight eight foot, but probably doesn't matter. Huh? Okay. Yeah, two foot's good. That'll be a little more realistic. Using trusses. All right, and then he wants another one at twelve foot height. in the nope. same place and it won't let him do it uh, i right. think i think if you go ahead and put it there mm -hmm. uh, actually not there you want to change the start from eight foot to 16 foot uh, so you might be able to put it next to it and then edit it to change the, the location Hmm. Yeah, so the way we had it, it was like you, you had these two windows down here, and then there was a third window that was just between them, but up on the second floor. Right. So you can do that if it's if it's between them and not not overlapping them, you can do it. But I think you might be able to cheat it by just changing that to change that to eight here. You definitely get a message that you have overlapping attached buildings because we check for that. But you really could have awnings that overlap. You can't have porches that overlap. You oh, can't have wow. porch over an attached building. So yeah, you'll get an error message. Hey, you got overlapping buildings. Uh, okay, but at least there's an option. So if that comes up again, I can force it that way. I was trying to drag it and it just would not let me. Oh, no, it won't let you. It, it, it prevents you from doing something that you don't think you should do because it would cause problems. Um, and the main thing it can cause problems with is if you put one with the same parameters over it, you don't notice that you have two there, but you have two there. And now you're going to get twice as much material because it's putting material for both of them. That would be, that would be different. Thank you. Um, let's see. I lost track of the chat here. Um, well, all right. So. I was building my own as you were demonstrating the walls are show, all showing short of the adjoining wall. Can I share and show the issue? Um, yeah, so the walls, as, as Sean pointed out, the, the ends of the framing gets cut short sometimes. Is that what you were seeing, Kurt? Is the framing was short? Or is he talking about the top? ceiling it was short of the adjoining wall is what he said oh hmm. yeah we got a couple of door a couple of votes for dormers while we're at it mm -hmm. um, Okay, yeah, so the framing is short um, we, and the sheeting is short. Yeah, you're aware of that and we're working on that uh, for the next release. Uh, what we wanted to do was, was to get this out into people's hands so they could start playing around. This is an existing issue that's been around with stud framing. There are quite a few issues with stud framing that we're discovering as we start putting in more stud frame walls, so uh, particularly interior stud frame walls. So we're going to get those cleaned up. Um, 
Let's see. <clears throat> so then, um, yeah, a couple of a couple of requests for dormers. Um, we'll circle back into that one. Uh, Jalen said, I would love to see different length lumber color coded on framing diagrams. <sighs> color coding is tough because we're we're color coding it based on the material, right? So we already color code things. Um, so we'd have to think about that. Yeah, Jalen says that way you could look at GERT and see if it comes out of a 16 or 12 or whatever, just something that we watch. So it's worth talking about. Um, we'll, uh, we'll try and get some more info from you, Jalen, and uh, get that into the backlog. Let's see. Back up to the top of the list to make sure we talked about all of this stuff. Um, off mezzanine. On the slope side, yeah, the, the issue with the slope slice, Duncan, again, is, is it's difficult to imagine how you would do that. How would you tell the program that that's what you want to do? Um, because it's one thing to have a different height of ground on each wall. But that's not really what you have in those scenarios. You have the ground is at zero on the front and it's at eight feet on the back. But on the sides, then it goes from zero to eight feet. Does it go from zero to eight feet or does it go from zero to six feet and then slowly to eight feet? Um, and how do you, how would you tell the program that's what you want to do? Um, interesting to, to hear some input on that. Uh, or even how other applications do that kind of stuff. Um, but that's the, the biggest sort of roadblock to slope sites. You almost have to have a topo map of the, of the site that you can input into the program. And, I don't know. Um, Yeah, so uh, yeah, so Timothy says you would have a the building interface with the ground, and then you could use a node system and allow the user to change the ground level every foot or so and calculate from there. So basically, you'd have you have a edit ground function where we just show you the the ground around the edge of the building, and then you could sort of with little nodes every foot or so, and you could drag those nodes up to a certain height. So something along those lines is kind of what I was thinking. Um, Uh, Kurt said, can you demonstrate how you did the inset corner on the main building? Can't forge. Mm -hmm. So let's see, I'll, I'll delete. I will re-input this, see how it goes. So really, you just use this can porch. So if I click on that, then you can just you know, define where this is going to begin. Right now, this is eight from the left, and it's going to come out eight, or it's going to go in eight actually here. Uh, but we could change this. So I put this right in the corner. I just set this to zero, and I kept it eight by eight. And the walls are fully open. You can also include the posts if you want. I did fully open. And so once you just put zero as the starter, just click. 
and it should put that in there. So Let's somebody change. asks, are the issues that we mentioned a few updates back fixed with the Camp Forge? Mm. So I don't think so. I know there are quite a few issues with it, which is why it still says in red, this is a preview feature. Um, so one of the things that we know that we need to address is things like, hey, I want I want a ceiling in this camp porch, but I don't want it in the rest of the building. Or even if you turn the roof off, Sean, um, this garage might not have sheeting on the inside. So there might not be any liner in the garage. And right now we can't do that because the back wall of the building, for instance, is one wall. So that wall either has liner on the inside of it or not. And uh, we can't do that right now. We need to be able to do that. Uh, we also need to be able to do things like maybe that second room in the back there has a different finish on the inside. And so we want to be able to address that separately. And our thinking there is that rather than change it on a wall and somehow be able to go into that back wall and say this back wall has liner in the first 40 feet of it and then the, the rest of it doesn't have liner. Um, instead, to be able to, once you've defined all these interior walls, what you have is rooms. And so if there was a room mode where you could go in and set the properties for a room, you could click on this garage and say, I want to set this to be an eight inch slab instead of the four inch slab I have in the rest of the building. And I want no liner on it and no ceiling to be able to override some of those settings there. That's the plan that we have, the vision we have for being able to address those kinds of scenarios. And also, yeah, ceiling. Um, is there ceiling in this room? Is there, you know, what's the floor in this room? Uh, what are the walls? Um, Johnny asked, how do you put short liner panels that don't reach the top of the wall? Um, I believe what you would do is go to uh, wall liner. Uh, if you open up wall liner, uh, no, on the main building. Wall liner, yeah. Turn on has interior wainscot. And what we need to do is to be able to turn off the liner. So you can specify a different liner material for the bottom part than the top part. But I think if you turn off the liner panels, it turns off the interior wainscot as well. May I interject? You may. So um, I've had to do this exact thing. And the way that I've done it is um, I go into the details of the interior liner. And um, then I go to liner material and I turn it off there to none. And then you leave the wainscot on a particular product system. And then it turns off the upper wall while leaving the lower wall still on. OK. Someone found a cheat. <laughs> So that should give you, you have liner, your liner is none, but you have Wayne Scott, and Wayne Scott is this one too. Okay, so now you can then go into the main building and the Wayne Scott and change that to uh, like five feet or whatever, whatever distance you need it to be. Mm -hmm. Kurt said you can also change your margin on your liner panels to make it shorter. <clears throat> That's another cheat that would work. Yeah. Uh, liner oh, yeah. under sheeting. Ball liner. I can play with these. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. 
So there are a number of ways to get it to do that. <clears throat> um, probably the most straightforward way to do what you're asking for is what you want is you want you want an interior wall that only has wainscot. Um, what it probably shouldn't do is put dirts in for the upper liner. If you don't have any upper liner, but I don't know we get we get in trouble when we when we turn stuff off when people turn off the liner. <laughs> so well, there are tricks you can do. Okay, so in this case, what we have here, Timothy says he doesn't supply drywall, and the upper upper was going to be drywall, so having the girts there was still important. So in that case, it is good that we say, let's frame this, and then the sheathing is really, it's not none, it's really by others. Mm -hmm. So setting it to none gives you what you're after, which is, I want everything except just skip putting the sheathing <laughs> And Brandon agrees with you, Tim, so that's one person. <laughs> so the margin won't it won't show in the 3D model, but it does change the length of that panel on the material list. Yeah. Yeah, because the margin doesn't show on the on the 3D model. Um, because a lot of times people will put a margin like a six inch margin on their on their liner so that it they know they get enough and what they don't want is that margin that liner poking up through the roof and stuff like that so yep <clears throat> all right um Anything else anybody wants to bring up? So we have we seem to have gotten consensus that inside of framing is where people want to dimension. Um, so we'll we'll leave that. Um, we can have a further option of, of down the road of saying, no, I want to input these to the center of the wall versus the inside of the wall, but we'll wait until we get some people asking for that. Uh, Johnny says, can ceiling liners be placed between rafters instead of flush? Not yet, um, but it is something that we're thinking about because it is a scenario that happens in certain situations, even on, on, um, on the wall liner, where you've got your posts and you've got girts on the outside of those posts, you just want to put liner between the posts up against the inside of the girts. So sounds like it's the same kind of thing there on, on the uh, on the ceiling ceiling liner. So currently no, but it is something that we were thinking about and will be coming at some point. So Timothy, I think what Johnny is asking for is, is you've got you've got rafters and then you've got purlin sitting on top of the rafters and you've got roof sheeting sitting on top of those purlins. What he wants is for to be able to put a liner panel, a, a panel of some sort between the rafters fastened to the underside of the purlins. 
so that when you're in the garage in the porch looking up at the up at the roof up the ceiling you see the rafters and between the rafters you don't see the underside of the purlins and the underside of of the upper roof so hey i guess right thanks john yeah. makes sense So again, it's similar to what uh, I think we had a customer asking for that for for their walls when they uh, because they use tapered columns for their posts. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't really fasten girts to a tapered column because you'd have a tapered inside wall. So when they do finish the inside of the building, they finish it between the posts. Right. This same yep. kind of thing, ceiling between the rafters. Yep. Um, you can even do ceiling between the trusses, particularly if you had you know, really cool looking timber dresses and you wanted to show them off, um, but you wanted to have it finished look. Yep. But come on, it's a pole barn. It's supposed to look rough. Barn to mini. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Those are the kinds of things that we run into when we start getting into bar um, yeah. Is there an option for timber frames trusses for a gable porch? Um, yeah, in this case, um, it's just a truss. I mean, we don't care what you call it. Um, I think what you're asking there for, is there an option to include a graphic for a timber frames truss? And that is a no at this point. Um, I mean, you can change the dimensions of these framing materials to make them, you know, look like timbers. Definitely, you know, not designing these. There's not going to be diagonals or. Yeah, so that's that's the thing that I think I think uh, Brandon was asking for was for timber framed trusses for a table porch. So they have a. A gable porch coming off the front of the building. What they want is a timber framed trusses on that that look really cool. Um, yeah. And um, you could certainly do that. You simply have a truss in your inventory called a timber framed truss, and you just <clears throat> you set your truss truss uh, truss override. Is that what it's called? To timber frame. And that it'll only pick one of your timber framed trusses, but it's not going to give you the graphic that you're after. It'll give you the correct material, but part of this. Um, cancel that. If you go to uh, details, reframing, I think we call it trust override. I may not have that. It might be hidden, yeah. Trust, what is that, yeah. So it's just a user defined. Yeah, there's a trust material. Um, but that's just wood or steel. It's like trust custom. And you can put whatever you want in there, and then you can choose it, and it'll change the... Trust that gets picked out of your catalog. Yeah, yeah. It's basically there's a there's a you can set. It's kind of like kind of works like loading, where yeah. there's a setting you can set, and if you set that to timber frame, for instance, it's going to only match a truss in your inventory that is timber frame truss. Yeah. So you could put that in your catalog and price it as a timber frame truss. Yeah, you just wouldn't get the graphic. So you wouldn't get but, the graphic. It's probably not yeah. really a truss. I mean, but you could get a price. Yeah, yeah, you get the price. Um, <clears throat> so Kurt asked about slabs only under only portions of the building. Um, so we run into a lot of horse barns that need slabs on main parts of buildings, but no slab under the horse stalls. So one of the things, going back to what we were talking about before with wounds, Kurt, um, was the idea of 
being able to set for a room, just for this room. So if you look at this, um, this guy that, uh, you can change the slab depth for an attached building. Mm -hmm. But for a horse barn, like let's say these three rooms that you have inside of here, Sean, yeah. you need to have no slab under them. Mm -hmm. um, then what you want to be able to do is to go to rooms, right. room mode that we talked about, and be able to say for this room, I want no slab. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to achieve that, you can either put walls around the horse stalls using interior walls, or one of the things that we want to do is to be able to, just like you can put in a wall, um, to be able to put in a wall as a divider line. And it's not really, it doesn't get framed or anything, but it does provide a divider for making these rooms. So you could put a divider line from the, uh, from that, uh, the corner, the cant porch there. Mm -hmm. You'd have a divider line running from there over to that other corner. And that would make that foyer its own room. Mm -hmm. So you could put in divider walls. There's divider and line then, um, as, as divider lines and then use those to define the rooms and then once we have the ability to say this room has no slab you would be able to in this particular extreme example say hey these three rooms have no slab mm -hmm. so does that make sense kurt it, there isn't the short answer is there's no way to do it right now other than as as Paul as Sean pointed out, if you if you you can do it for an attached building and say this building has no slab, but you can't do it for part of the inside of the building. Okay. No. And then Timothy asked, is there a good way to have a porch with an A-frame section over the front door? Um Paul said that sounds like a gable building, but make it open wall. He said that the roof does not align with the rest of the porch. I, I might need to unmute for this one again. Um, so yeah. what ends up happening is, is where all the valleys should be intersecting, they don't. At least they didn't as of, you know, the, the last update. So you would make your, you would make your A-frame gable porch and then I would make porches next to it, and the roofs would not interface with each other at all. They'd leave big openings and all sorts of funky things. So the only way that I was able to force the system to do it was to create a full porch and then create a gable porch that was like one foot deep and put it on the front of the main porch and make it have zero overhang so that it would match the overhang of the previous thing. And then all the valleys would actually work together and the roof would go back like it's supposed to. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. So if you, if you think of, if you, if I understand what you're saying, you've got in a long building, you've got a door in the middle of it and you put a gable building in front of that door. That's just a porch. Yeah that has a gable roof over it. And then on either side of that, you put a shed roof and where those come up against it, you want those shed roofs to sort of valley up to the gable roof. Uh, um, yeah, they, they, they that, just refuse to interface. Yeah, geometry is complicated. Um, I mean, tech, it's a bug, right? It's supposed to do that. It doesn't do that in those particular scenarios. Um, you should be able to do just like you said, put a put a shed and then a gable roof and then more shed, and it should figure out those geometries correctly. Um, like you said, the workaround is the the workaround that the, yeah, the only workaround that I found that works is let's say it has a one foot overhang. I would create a one foot deep. Uh, gable building where I wanted it uh, over, like in front of the door and then just make the overhang that it has zero and then it'll at least be at the same uh, distance out 
and then it'll yeah. it'll interface everything going all the way back at that point because it's kind of like overlapping and it seems like when it overlaps it's fine but when they come together at an edge and they're not at the same angles that's when it doesn't mm -hmm. yep they should be at the same angles you should fire the architect <laughs> Um, I think you, you might be able to use the same trick that we talked about with the with the eyebrows and just put a porch okay on there let's see if we <clears throat> so if I put in the attached building with open walls The only reason I even ask is because it's a pretty common thing that I have customers saying, okay, well, I want to I want to have the, the, the standard porch, but then I, w I want this A-frame right in front of my door. I love that. I want that. And I've had that question asked over and over and over again, which is why I've been trying to figure out a way around the system. Because when I do it the way that it kind of makes sense in my head, make like three individual porches, they don't interface and it looks really ugly and I know the metal isn't right. So I've told them, I've just had to tell the customer, if you want that, we'll have to work with the builder or the builder, yeah, and have them just manually calculate that out. Right, so I'm experimenting right now with, with just, I put a, 10, 12 gable attached building in the center of the wall. And then I'm going to put mark. a porch. Yeah, just a second. Let me see if it works first. <laughs> so I put a porch over here. And then... Um, da -da -da. Oh, close. Yeah, that is close. Yeah, this, yeah, this I think is what people were talking about earlier when they were talking about the dormers. Ah. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a little bit fuzzy because what I think of as a dormer is um, if my main roof has a steeper pitch and I have a room up there and I need to have some do some uh, win some do windows in it, then I might have dormers, which is going to be a little doghouse sitting up on top of this, this roof, kind of like a cupola that slid down the roof and has a window inside. Um, that's what I think of in terms of dormers, but I think when a lot of people are from from what i've heard anyways when a lot of people are talking about dormers they're talking about this kind of thing um so in this case let's see we have let's put an overhang here and hello hello johnny Sorry, I received a phone call that I was going to answer. So this kind of gives you what you're after, but it looks like we're missing the uh, the sheathing on the front wall of this section of it. Um, yeah, there's no sheathing over the front of this. Um, Trust carrier here. Yeah, I mean, it's close. Um, and then it looks like it also has excessive, uh, if you look underneath, your um, your gable there still has some pieces coming down that doesn't really make sense. And so oh, it's, yeah, it's the sort whole of interfacing, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, what, you, what you really want is to basically be able to say, I want 
this porch. Well, no. What you want is to have a porch that starts here. Yeah. You want a porch that starts here and comes up to here. Yeah. And then you want an A-frame porch, and then you want another porch that's flat. You just want it to, to do that right. Right. And if it did that right, then there wouldn't be a problem at all. So the, the way that I've done this is what I did was I added a little porch off the front of this porch that only came out one foot and made that in the gable style, and then that's how it actually went and calculated yeah. the. It looked like it calculated the metal right anyways. Yeah. Yeah, so if I put a custom porch, 25. <clears throat> but the framing that you want, if I understand you right, is you want trusses coming out from, from the main wall building all the way out. And then you just want the porch to wrap around it. Yeah, exactly. People love that look, especially with the truss uncovered, and you can see the truss and everything else. Forgot to put overhangs on that other one. and I left the walls closed. Hang on, we'll fix it. Well, it's already doing better than normal. Normally the, uh, the, the gable would just go straight back and then the porches would just stop and they wouldn't continue on. Right, and now we've got this, we lost our porch, our post, it became a two-by. So this is what should be happening with what you described, is it should do just this with some better posts here. I'm not sure why it's not putting a post here. You really need a post here. Yeah, it's complicated, right? Um, but you want the trusses running back to the door. Yep, yep, that's exactly yep. right. That's that's yeah, that's a lot better than what I've gotten that way, anyways. Yeah, it should work. There are certain certain conditions of geometry where it fails. Um, And we've cleaned some of those up. We haven't cleaned all of those up. Looks like we don't quite have the overhangs right. This overhang should actually be angling down the ear. So maybe we could get that updated in uh, the next update. Uh, if you have, a, like you said, it, it works in this one. It works in other ones. Uh, we have had some issues with that in the past. If you have a specific job where that, I know what you're talking about, it just leave this off, right? It yeah. kind of looks like, if I understand it right, Kind of winds up looking like that, or, or even worse, yeah. where it just leaves the sheeting. Yeah, it's it's not detecting that these two hit each other. And so, if you have some jobs where it's doing that, I'll send them into support. Say, hey, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Um, the more you give us, the more we'll. Because we're kind of playing whack-a-mole with these kind of things, where you're like, okay, so I fixed this one issue, but now there's this other issue. <laughs> And it is that surprisingly the geometry is really complex with these kinds of things. So yeah, that's that's bizarre too. Wow. 
why it's doing that. Oh, because this wall got combined. But only one wall got combined, and then you have double right. walls right next to each other. Yes, because you need a wall here to support these trusses. And you need a wall here to close off the gable end of that gable or the, the shed. The gable end of the shed has to be here too so that you close it off. And it doesn't really because there's another building. We don't need it. We need to detect that. And we don't. Hey, that's better. So okay. That's pretty close, but not quite. Um, if we look at like the sheathing drawing for this wall, we're getting sheathing on this face of this gable, and we don't really need it. Oh. But you could turn that off manually. Yeah, and you don't need these pieces. You could turn it off manually, but it should be smart enough to detect that that's the case. In this case, you do need the truss carrier running all the way back, though, right? Yes. So you would need that, and then the truss blocks if you're using them. So, okay. So we can get sort of there, and you just need to. Uh, you need to finagle. Like I said, if you've got jobs where this isn't working, um, this because this is the correct way to do this. You should be able to put this porch in here, and then this porch that connects to it, and this porch that connects to it. It should just work. Okay. Thank yeah. you for showing me this. Yeah. So um, again, like I said, if, if you've got jobs where it doesn't work, send them into support, and we'll be happy to try and help you figure out how to make them work, and also put them in our in our library of, hey, this job doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Let's fix okay. the software so All right? I will uh, gladly send a couple over. Uh, just as case, uh, use cases, there was a really complicated house build that I was doing that had all sorts of roof errors. Yeah, those complicated ones, I mean, we can, the more, the more we have in hand, the more likely we are to be able to fix them all, okay? All right. Well, it looks like we're kind of wrapping up here, so. All righty. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. So again, this will be released sometime between now and Tuesday. It looks like maybe Tuesday. We have a couple things to clean up. And we'll do this again in a few weeks. So appreciate your time and thanks for using Smart Build.